Hello and welcome. The popular fabric section of the Balogun market in Lagos and indeed similar markets in Abuja, Onitsha, Port Harcourt, Kanum, and Ibadan are heavily populated by businesses in their second or third generations. Well, our research as NASPIRE revealed that only 33% of Nigerian family businesses were led by the second generation. Second generation family owners, second generation succeed, succeeding that first generation. And that number dropped to 7% by the third generation. And of course, you know, the struggle, it's a struggle, it's a struggle with innovation, it's a struggle with leadership transition, or what we call succession, and even survival. Well, joining me in our interview segment today to bring insight into the role of corporate governance in generational family, we want to call it, businesses in Nigeria, is Isaac Orolubagbe, Esquire, BSc, FCA, MBA, and established guru in this field of study. Oh, he's going to be unveiled much more to us very shortly. And also, in this episode, we're going to be looking at a few of our social diary, a great big bang team is coming towards the end of this month of November 2021. Watch out for it. And please watch out for information we are going to be passing across your screen for adverts. I can on air will take your adverts of products and services to the nooks and crannies of the world. And you can be sure it will get onto the mileage. So you do not want to miss the phone numbers and the emails that will come in that advert section. This and more will be our full package on ICANN on air for today. You want to stay on? I want to stay connected. We shall soon be back.
Thank you and welcome back. Now unveiling my guests, Mr. Isaac Orolubagbe, a guru in this field of corporate governance practices from the high, from the medium to the low, and who has plied his trade and his expertise, not just in Nigeria, but outside Nigeria, highly sought out after. Mr. Isaac Korolu Bagwe, you are welcome to ICANN on air. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother. You know, I, 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 I asked this question uh, about our folks. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that you are an FCA, you are a member of our ICANN. That despite the hues and the hula baloo about Nigerians being in the perception of so many, um, second rate in uh, our type of offerings. And someone like you has been out there. I know you are stuck more in Kenya. You are being sought out here and there. Yet we're still in Nigeria. What is this feeling like for you, Mr. Ibrahim? Well, um, Mr. Fatunke, if I can call you chief, uh, I want to thank you first and foremost for inviting me to join you on ICANN on here. And I also want to use this opportunity to thank the council and the executives of ICANN for this concept. Uh, it's a very refreshing development. Uh, this is a very simple way to push continuous professional development without pressure. No exam from the convenience of your room, you're learning about new things and contemporary issues. And I'm sure this channel will also benefit our prospective uh, for our students who are going to be dealing with multiple case studies and uh, the perceptions that are shared on this type of platform will become a very powerful tools for those who want to deal with case studies, problems of companies, policies that interact with everyday activities of executives. And this type of platform, it's wonderful. It's refreshing. And I want to congratulate everybody that has put it together. And I thank you seriously for inviting me to share my own perspective. Thank you very much, sir. Now, as for Nigerian image and angles, people see us. Now, it depends on the caliber of Nigerians that we export. This is what ultimately determines our image outside the country. We should export professionals. And when we export professionals, my, what I've, my experience has been that people outside Nigeria really want to meet Nigerian managers. And we are well sought out expatriates in terms of uh, knowledge, capability, and competence. And we've done well, a lot of our Nigerian uh, representatives, if you come to South Africa, for example, where schooled, uh, you will about a third of the doctors within the medical industries are all Nigerians. It is not possible for the healthcare system in South Africa to function without Nigerians. Now, if you also come around the West Africa, I, I, I've done a lot of sessions and experience sharing up to uh, Syria alone. And we are not ridiculed. We are looked up as expatriates. Not just expatriates, special expatriates. For you to survive in an environment like Nigeria, not only should you must you be a good manager, you also constitute a government on your own. Infrastructure like power, you have to contend with it. Water, security. Nigerian staff look up to their chief executive as their own bankers, their own hospitals. So, and you have to cope with all these dynamics and deliver results for your shareholders. So, we are not just we are not uh, commonplace managers. If you survive in this environment, then the you can the the There is anywhere. absolute no doubt that we can be common accountants. There are accountants. There are accountants just like there are eggs and there are eggs. And then you and I. Um, 
a lot of our professional colleagues know that by the time you go through that rudiment of I can, you can, of course. And I quickly just delve in, salvo you my very first question. In my intro, I talked about the fact that, you know, governance, perhaps weaknesses, innovation, so many things are really wrong in generational businesses. But perhaps to try and break it down so that our listeners and our viewers can understand, um, why are good corporate governance practices considered so important in the survival, long-term growth, and stability of organizations in general terms? Thank you. Now, I think I'm going to start by trying to define corporate governance in a layman way. I mean, there are so many definitions of corporate governance. But as a layman, I would like to define it from two perspectives, very simple perspective. Corporate governance allow you to perform because every organization has articles of association or charter. Second line in almost every charter, the objects of your company is always stated. And corporate governance is the instrument that we put together to allow you to deliver on that object. Okay, that's the first perspective. The second perspective is compliance. We do not want you to perform by hurting people or by breaking law or by not conforming with the rules and procedure. So you also have corporate governance on compliance side. So corporate governance is all the rules, framework, and whatever that we have set together to ensure that you perform and then you comply. Very simple. So, and when we write all this framework, sustainability is always the underlying philosophy behind whatever rule where we write. So, if corporate governance is good for multinational so that it can perform and comply, then it's also going to be good for the small enterprise. Whether you are small, big, or family, or PLC, whatever will make you to continue to succeed on a going concern basis, then it will be good for you, it will be good for family business, it's also good for SME. In fact, it's also good for NGO and government organizations. Everybody needs to perform and to comply. Great point, great point. Yeah, after all, the young must always grow, <laughs> as, they, as they say. Now, for the benefit of our viewers, um, what, therefore, are generational businesses? And do you think they can benefit from good corporate governance practices as you have actually enunciated? From the word generation, it means a business that is moving from one group of the people, especially family people, to another generation of the same family. So grandfather may set it up, they pass it to father, father runs it for 30, 40 years, then pass it to the grandchild. Now, now we are talking of generation. You move from one set to another set to another set. Um, as long as family is involved, cousins, uncle, aunties, son, daughter, that is what we mean by generation of one family group to another family group. I think it's just as simple as that. They do some environmental scan and just look around us and outside our ecosystem because by the time you look at great entities like Ford Motors, of course, uh, McDonald's since 1948, of course, Coca Cola 1886, Goldman Sachs Group. The Mercedes, who now own um, UAC, PLC, our own PZ, PZ group, etc. Um, they have been in existence for several years and are still working strong. What, Mr. Rogberg, what do you say that these institutions have in common? In other words, what are the characteristics of this enduring institution? Okay. okay. That's the beauty well, the of family business. Usually, a family business is set up by who I would call a patriarch or a matriarch. And the people that set it up, they is beyond money. They put their values behind the business. They put their passion behind the business. They put relationship. And they use all of this to make their customers happy. Now, once you have somebody that is driven by passion, 
you know, when we talk about businesses, really, why do we set up enterprise? We set up enterprise essentially to please the customer. And if you please the customer, the, there will be repeat patronage. And it is repeat patronage that brings profit. So when you do a good job, the customer bless you with money. So most of the family enterprise you see, they have a driving force common to all of them. And that driving force is the spirit, the passion of the founder. And if you have the second generation imbibing that spirit, following the, those set of values, then you know the business is lucky. So most of these big, big business enterprises you see, they've been able to move from being family, passing on the value system. If you go to PZ now, you see the value of the original partisans of is still driving, even though they are third, fourth, fifth generations causing in-laws are there. So the, the motivating spirit is still very much around. The values is there. And of course, they have also managed to move from just being family to becoming professional organization. So all the great enterprises you have mentioned have not just been doing well. They have moved from being family to being professional. And of course, once you become professional, then you tend to embrace corporate governance. And corporate mm -hmm. governance has a lot of elements which will also help you to proceed into the future. So, um, okay. as always, if you remember Coke as the principal man who is so mm. much in love with Coke that cannot live until you look at the financial of Coke at the end of the day. This is how our Miss Nigeria you have to be part of Mantu. He wants to mm. know what goes on every day. Most organizations mm. are driven by such great men who love their enterprise and who love their customers and is permanently pushing for customers to have a good deal. Super, um, Mr. Isaac Rolubagri, that is uh, wonderful. I like how you have done that. And, uh, you know, in my intro, I was talking about Balogun, and I was talking about Tano, I was talking about Portacot, I was talking about Abuja. Uh, some of this one man, one woman thing, usually, uh, more often than not, once the founder dies, uh, the mortality of those entities just go out. Well, perhaps because of uh, the government policies, perhaps because they have not been able to shift their focus. Now, if you look at Nigeria, you know, Nigeria has a history of very successful businesses. Of course, I would, would just give some examples that have failed. They were good businesses. They were top and grand, they like grand of business entities at their time. For example, are they allowed to other holdings? Adebowale Electrical Stores, Oceanic International Bank, PLC, Lead Merchant Bank Limited. They talk about Cabo Air, Concord Airlines, Social Liso Airlines, Opada Airlines, and we can go on and on and on. Some of these formerly great entities failed after the passage of their founders. Why some of them failed because of poor leadership management? takes me to the very key point about succession planning. How important is succession planning in survival and going concern for a business entity? Mm. Well, you have answered your question. Succession planning is extremely important. Uh, but it's not to be taken at the face value. Um, if a father has written a will and his desire is to pass on his business to his son, therefore, uh, the law recognizes that the son must become the owner. Now, leadership succession and ownership succession should never be confused. You can donate title. You can donate a kingship or chieftaincy title you cannot donate leadership. Leadership must be earned. It's, it, it, the followers must believe in you. You must have the competence, technical competence, emotional competence, people relationship competence to evolve as a leader that people can follow. Now, there is a small confusion that I've seen in uh, private enterprise in Nigeria. We tend to confuse 
the business with chieftain C title that can be passed on to a child. No, it's not the same thing. Leadership has to be earned. And the beauty of this is that leadership can also be learned. People can go to school, you can go for internship, work under a good leader or a good mentor, and you will arrive. You will earn all the skills, the respect of your followers. Now, definitely, there are many things that kill enterprise. Um, I, as you, I'm always liking to talk like a layman. Businesses don't die. It is the people that are running businesses that kill their businesses. You can be selling palm oil today and the market changed from palm oil to green oil. It is your responsibility as a manager to always find out the need of the customer, both the ones they are telling you and the ones that they are even unable to express and deliver. So business moves based on the market and the needs of the customer. We have responsibility to remain attentive, to keep our eyes and ear open, to keep finding, looking for what the customer wants. Even if they don't tell you, it's our duty to make their life beautiful. Because the beautiful. customers are yeah, that's our job. So, beautiful. Um, no, 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 no. Let, 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 let me interrupt you there a little okay. because this subject of succession. Okay, so succession planning is there. You think outside the box, you shift your paradigm, you listen to the customer. Does does that therefore imply that um, succession planning is built to endure? <laughs> no, it's not. Succession uh, planning is a serious business. It is not something you can just say in one minute. No. To become a leader, passion is very critical. Passion is critical. You need energy. And of course, you need wisdom and technical competence. Um, Why you can donate the ownership? You cannot donate passion. The child must be interested in the business. He must be committed to the values of the matriarch or the patriarch. And he must be willing to go all the way and make all the sacrifices. So if you have found out that your child has the interest, that is the passion, is interested, then we need to design a training program or, well, whatever it is. It, there must be a learning process. Either we're sending them to your friend in another company to hone their skills. Most importantly, if you look at all the big generational business among the conservative Americans or the British or my friends who are Jewish, they allow the children to start from the base. There is dignity in labor. Let your child learn from the ground up. Walk on the shop floor. When you walk on the shop floor, you can respect the laborers because you yourself, you are a laborer. We can arrange for the promotion to be fast, but let everybody go through all the key sections. Father, grandfather who built the enterprise did not arrive as a big man in one day. So why do you want your son to become a big man suddenly? So everybody needs to learn the ropes. And once they learn the ropes, why not? So it's a serious, it's a serious business. All the elements must be well defined. What are the key attributes that a good successor must have? You must define it and then you write it down. So any son that wants to take over from the father, we must be able to tick all the five or six components that are key to become the leader. Now, um, you know the story of Oman Baba Olowo? I don't know how to call this in English. The son of the wealthy. Um, most of us are praying that our children should not go through the trouble that we went through to make it in life. We mm -hmm. keep forgetting one critical mistake. It is those troubles that made us. It is not the luxury that turned you to a successful man. So you should allow the kids to have their own fair measure of troubles. Of, hmm. uh, they must acquire all these experiences. I've seen a lot of people, the kids come out of university, they appoint them executive director. You are digging a hole for the end of your company. Hmm. The staff, hmm. you pray to them, they say, oh, for rest, sir. Hmm. You hmm. can never hmm. be wrong. No, let your people and who is fooling them, who is on their side, who is not on their side. But when they don't know anything, how do they read human beings? How do they read hmm. customers? Uh, there are many things that they have to learn. 
You mm -hmm. went through mm -hmm. it, allow your side. If they don't have to spend 30 years to go through their own, but if it's five years or 10 years, please, everybody's entitled to their own mistake. Your son or your daughter has a right to make her own mistake. Super, super, super point. <laughs> Just reminds me of the uh, the metamorphosis, you know, um, that brings on the, the butterfly. You can't really help. However, Mr. Rolubagwe, I take you back to where I started my premise from. Uh, it's so difficult okay. to really believe that the likes of Adiola Udutola, for instance, just giving us an example, okay. or uh, Ola Shuri uh, with Lead Merchant Bank didn't have that energy, and um, they were the typical kind of people that would have spoiled the child. And so it looks to me that post-succession crisis is part of life and business. I'd like to ask you, if this happens, against your best of intention and post-succession crisis arises, uh, looking at, uh, to me, the law and so many things that happen thereafter, how best can that be managed? <laughs> well, this is just the same other problem, my brother. When problem come, you need to calm down. Just slow down. First, diagnose what are the real issues. Okay? When you know the issues, some of the issues may involve emotions, which require a lot of emotional intelligence. But most importantly, I think, when crises come like this, an external, a wise external party has a very good way of dousing tension. If maybe the crisis is caused by two brothers or two siblings arguing or fighting over who will take over. You need a wise third party to come in who have nothing to gain to calm the, to calm the nerves. And most of the time when people have crisis, if you can be patient and dig into the root of the crisis, you are likely going to find out every, we have a common platform. It's because we don't understand each other that we go into a lot of argument. If you tell me exactly what your interests are, you, and the two parties explain their interests, you will, the space will open for agreements to, to, to arrive. So we need to be open uh, when we have a crisis, we need, definitely need to be open. And a lot of times, you need third party. I've done a lot of businesses with friends. When my best friend said, let's do business together, I said, no, we need to have two more people. If I argue with you and we disagree, who's going to say to the quarry? So I, my model is five people. If three people are messing up, two people will be calm. But when we go into crisis over family business, there's always a need to have an uncle, not even, I won't call them uncle, I call them the Afeni Ferris. Everybody must have a well wisher, somebody who is happy that you are progressing. And those are the people that will come in and allow you to go back to your basis and the wisdom will prevail. Uh, when you appoint yourself a chairman or an independent director, such people, one of the greatest characteristics of a chairman or an independent director is that they have accomplished in their own calling and they bring those perspectives to help you. And they are not looking for sitting allowance, they are not trying to take over your company or buy share. When you have issues, they will bring wisdom into. And you know, when we say somebody is experienced, he has been through his own share of problem. Most likely he has been through that same situation before and they can pull from their wealth of experiences and help you out of your own issue. Thank you. Great point. Discipline, the time that we are taught coming, coming through our iPad exams and, um, you know, being articles and getting the training and doing bottom stop is what I am hearing you say. And um, even owner, owner managers, owner managers bringing in succession planning, it's a must, I guess. Uh, I want to now ask you this. For these owner managers, would it be your advice that they should strive to be listed on the stock exchange? One, 
to have increased access to capital, of course, naturally, and to enjoy dilution of risks and have better access to professional management, guarantee survival, growth, and longevity. I'm asking this um, because a conversation has been going on, listing requirements, it takes a bit of uh, an arm and a tool for you to be able to get listed. I don't even understand all these other things. Why don't I just manage what I have? Would you, would you advise owner managers to go on the stock exchange for those points that I raised? Well, I think your points are very important. Yeah. Those are textbook cases, and uh, we can't debate that. Those are valid, very valid points. But let's bring the street sense to it now. Why are you an entrepreneur? Why did you set up a business? Did you set up business so that you can work there till you die? Or you set up business so that you can be financially independent? And we as accountants, when we are discussing financial management, there's an underlying assumption behind all our theories. That is to maximize the creation of wealth, to create wealth for the owner. That's the reason why we are in business. How are you going to expropriate or appropriate that wealth if you don't build a company where you can get out of, sell some percentage and put money in your pockets? Now, the only way to become free of work is to prepare the bride. Prepare your company as a company that you can sell at a great value. And when you sell at such a huge value, then you never need to work again in your life. You can really retire and enjoy what we call financial freedom. This is the main reason why all of us are going into business. It was later that all this emotional issue come in. It is creation of value that drives enterprise. Now, to get that value or to assess that value, you must prepare your company as a company that people can invest in or people can buy or people can give loan. That's the only time you can become rich. Otherwise, you'll be a very successful employee till you die. Whether you set it up as your own or you are working for somebody, employee is employee. If you cannot leave the company, go away and still be okay. You remain an employee. So the question you have asked is about how do we move the company from your own ownership to public ownership or to an ownership where two or three or four people can buy into? Now, do you have to wait until that time when you are sick and you need money for surgery? That's when you want to sell your company? No, you are not planning well. You must get ready for the end game. Nobody can live forever. Nobody can remain strong and able to drive their company. No, you don't have such time. You must structure your portfolio from earned income to unearned income, whoever you are. So the only time you can enjoy the benefits of your sweat is to design the structure so that you can leave the company and continue to prosper. One of the best ways to leave your company and prosper is to prepare your company for the marketplace. Uh, if you prepare for marketplace, you are preparing for private equity, you are preparing for your friend to buy share, you are preparing for even bank to buy, to give you loan. That preparation is a great preparation. I, I, I'm taking my own company well, that I work for to stock exchange. When we went to the market, that company we thought is one naira, it was valued for four naira. Within 30 days, the value went to 15 naira. You need to see how people are smiling, how we now suddenly realize that all our sweat was not in vain. How do you know your company is worth anything until you are ready for a market to appraise you? You, don't, you are just an employee, good laborer. And we need to move from being a laborer to become real entrepreneur, people who want to retire free of worry. Thank you. Fantastic point. Um, I quickly just just ask you, you, you this. Um, Mutari Yakubu um, is asking, we still have this trend where blood relations, father and sons, having a board chairman and MD of companies in Nigeria. Now, is that a true reflection of a proper separation of rules as envisaged by the corporate governance code? And is that an indictment on the enforcement of corporate governance code in Nigeria by the Financial Reporting Council? <laughs> well, very interesting question. If the company is listed on Nigerian stock exchange, then it is an infringement. 
But if it is a private company that is nothing like that, it is not an infringement. There are a lot of companies where father and son are in those roads and they are doing fantastically well. And if you cross the border and go to the United States, you will see many companies. And uh, where my brother work, Mobile Nigeria, even though the law in Nigeria said the chairman cannot be MD, Mobile wrote letter to Stock Exchange and they were able to prove with a lot of empirical results that their model is successful. So in the US, they like decision to be, they want to hold the chairman accountable and they want decision making to be quick. And they have thousands of companies that are run that way, that are doing well. There is no uh, straight rule that is cast in any stone around governance. What is important is to follow the principles of corporate governance. How you achieve those goals is what we call the ways and means. The end result is to build value and to satisfy customer and to build company that can survive all of us. And MD and chairman combined together, those are ways. We can never turn the means to an end as an end in itself. So mm -hmm. in, the, in Britain, they have their own way. In America, they have their own way. In Germany, they have their own And everybody is able to prove that my way is working for me. So really, if it's a private company, and your son is ready, and he shares your dream and aspiration and passion, come on. Who is going to take the company to the moon? It is the son, the new generation. So mm. it, it, but the companies are not always set up for son. If you have a son who is not interested, and you transfer right under your nose, it will kill the company. But if you transfer <laughs> to your son, who has been groomed and is ready, right in your nose, you will be smiling. You will see your company multiply in multiple fold. And uh, there are a couple of uh, enterprises in Nigeria where the father handed over to their son, and the father was just looking like this, saying, wow, so these children know so much. I should have handed mm -hmm. over long ago. Leadway mm -hmm. Assurance is a classic one. And the father transferred to his children right under his nose. He saw Leadway metamorphosized to become the biggest insurance company in Nigeria. But it didn't Super. happen overnight. They Super. were well. Thank you, sir. It went through, you know, the rigor of training, the discipline, yeah. you know, yes. um, yeah. you are asked to go on, you are put, like you said, on the job, and um, you learn through the ropes. Yes, yes. Now, um, Mr. Orolu Bagbe, the yes, truth is that in real practice, SMEs, owner managers suddenly found a situation where that job did not work for them. Not necessarily because they had not tried. I mean, I, I know a couple that uh, wanted something like that to happen, and unfortunately, the, the train came down, and the son that was being good, uh, you know, uh, just went down. Yes. But I, I, I want to ask you this question, and I want you to listen to it carefully. Most the owner's son or daughter take over the leadership of an entity, or like you have implied, if that is just not going to be, close your eyes because the average mindset is, well, what I've worked for for years is not going to be taken over by the bio people and the same people and they may sign me out of existence. Must, must the son or your blood necessarily take over the role of leadership in an organization? No, it's not a must. Definitely not a must. And uh, crises do happen. What I'm going to say is first professionalize your company. Look for capable hand. If your son or daughter happen to be, good luck to you. But you can always transfer ownership to your children. Ownership and leadership is not the same thing. So there is nothing like a moth in, uh, I mean, I have a friend who sold his company, the leading MIE company in this country, and I spoke to him, what are you going to do? The children, only two daughters, they're not interested in engineering. So rather than will the company to them, he found a very good company that can buy it, and the daughters became multi-millionaires. He transfer wealth to them, not body. If they are not interested in transferring stress to your children, what is important is that business has value 
It is value that you transfer, not headache. So it's wow. not compulsory. Ownership is different from ownership, and I, I, I think we, we we cannot emphasize that uh, enough. And in, in case um, uh, listeners are just tuning in, and we are looking at uh, the role of corporate governance in generational family businesses in Nigeria, and I've been fielding questions to a guru in that field in and outside Nigeria. Mr. Isaac Orolu Bagbe, he obviously uh, thinks global, acts local. I come back, um, Mr. Isaac Orolu Bagbe, to now ask you this. It's not been all gloom to Nigerian family businesses succeeding from generation to generation. And that should be lessons. Because when we think of the entrepreneurs that we can learn from their success story, um, uh, our erudite founding founder of the ICANN professional just in Nigeria, elsewhere, our papa, Ribat papa, and I bent to mention his name, Akitola Williams, Deloitte. The GTB is another very great example. And of course, uh, we're looking at Access Bank, they may have changed form, but their founders have exited and their entities are still going well. What enduring lessons do you think we can draw from these great, great family enterprises? Well, we talk about most of it. Uh, never forget why you are in business. You are never in business for transfer of business to children. You are in business to serve your customers. So mm -hmm. if you are in business to serve customers, you put together all the professional team and competence to serve your customer. Papa wrote in Akitola Williams, he focused on accounting service. And he assembled a team and make sure that the next person to, to take over from him are capable people. Paul Adiola and his friends. They are family friends. Um, is Paul Adiola son the MD of GT today? No. Is the family complaining about the size of their dividend? No. So it is not once you, I mean, for me, the biggest issue is why are you in business? Don't confuse it with your chieftaincy title. Once you don't serve customer, it doesn't matter whether you put your great grandchildren, the customer will walk away from you. Hmm. If you hmm. can continue that service then you are lucky. If service is out of it, it's gone. The company will fail. So hmm. it's not... Uh, for me, the big lesson that you can see around us is Guarantee Trust was set up to provide customer service. They've Super. managed to change them three times because of... And it's still service. If they slack Super. in the service, they will displace them. So it is Super. very simple. Customer will vote with their money. Whether it's Super. your son or grandchild or daughter, you mess around with that service, they will leave you. So if whoever we create the service, build a professional organization, put control, put governance, and then your family will have a good deal. Whether they are leadership or they are just shareholders, everybody will have a good time. Thank you. And you will have transferred, you have transferred wealth. Um, <laughs> time usually will not be a friend that I recognize Mr. Fatai Adesh, you know, that we should not continue to be uh, spectators. We should really get, get, get involved. Now, Mr. Orubagbe, what will be your final words as we as we round up this interview segment? Well, I will just thank you and then tell all of us, especially those of us running small practices. Uh, a lot of accountants are under tremendous stress and they are thinking of passing their business to their children. Turn your most important staff to a partner and then you can hire and have a good deal. Focus on giving service to customer. Never take your customer for granted. If you're expecting for your culture, your tradition, I like to hand over my business, move a young for money, you know, oh, Yoruba has it, Igbo has it. It is not your food that you are passing over. Don't pass stress to your children. Pass hmm. wealth to your children. The company is not the same thing as wealth. The, let the professional children who are trained, who are chartered accountants, chartered engineers, let them continue with the stress. Those are professional people. And let your family become shareholders. Give them the share certificate. Let them come for their AGM. 
put together a beautiful structure. Have discipline in your family, which is about having family constitution, family rule. Let's know who the family that will represent you in the company. That's it. And then you will see during your own lifetime, your company will multiply in size. All your staff are looking for is five percent, two percent. They don't. They are not cont contesting ownership with you. They are happy with their small situation. Don't envy them. Let them work and continue to grow the enterprise. And and I'm, I'm looking forward to Nigerian companies having branches like some of our banks have all over Africa. So that we took a, a PZ was made in Nigeria, and they grew to London, bought cushions. It's made in Nigeria. The Levantis family started selling Coca-Cola in Ido. Now it's a conglomerate listed in a London Stock Exchange and a Cyprus Stock Exchange. These are made in Nigeria, multinational company. We can all copy from a group. Super, super, super fantastic points. Nigeria Ferrada say that's what Italians will call it. Nigerians can do it. Thank you very much, Mr. Oral We are going to be calling more and more on you to come and share your experience. It's been wonderful. And uh, 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 viewers, I thank you for staying on. We have a couple of few other things we are going to share with you in this segment of the program. Please hang on, I will soon be back with you. really thank you for staying tuned just unveiling our diary from november 29 to december the third the institute of chartered accountants of nigeria in alignment with our old chapter new chapter opened new chapters into our first accountant conference and our presidents of our institutes 
Mrs. Konfote Itayo, who will be waiting to welcome you to an array of knowledge, networking, fun. I don't think you want to miss it. It's going to be great. And as you saw in the video, we have both home and abroad highly resourceful persons that will be sharing great knowledge with us. I also must um, acknowledge uh, participants. Thank you very much for your very nice and very kind comments, which you have uh, given to us uh, on ICANN on Air. ICANN on Air has come to stay. The signature um, products that the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria has put on the table uh, just left for us to see. Uh, I am enthralled by some of the comments that came from um, our guests today, Mr. Isaac Orolu Bagbe. Wealth can be transferred. There is absolutely no fist cough in just ensuring that when we gather such knowledge, we apply them. And who says I can, is out there that can give advice free to a lot of people. You don't understand a few things, or you need to do a lot of networking. ICANN is the place to go in terms of policy, in terms of owner managers, and in terms of generational businesses living and outliving their first, second generations. The right value, the right integrity, the right accuracy that you should be bring to bear onto your, your, your businesses. If you have enjoyed this episode, we tell you that um, we are going to have another episode come Tuesday, the 23rd of November. It's also going to be at 6 p.m. West African time. And the venue, of course, will be Facebook, Instagram page, Twitter, all the social media handles. Just go out there, like them. When you do the liking to them, our own live program will just pop on and just come come on to you. Um, the topic we are going to be looking at um, on Tuesday is another interesting one, and it's um, the accountancy profession, technology, and the future of work. Our guest is going to be Mr. Olufemi Awoyomi, FCA, FCTI, FCIB, FIOD, FIAPM, FIIM, FICA, a gentleman that I know is well packaged that will come and share with you all, always and ever the kind of knowledge that you need to succeed and you need to pass on to succession. And in any case, to see how this seeming talk about our profession like other professions is it a profession for the future? Come and see how technology is going to help us bridge that gap. I leave you with this quotation. And I start the quotation. It, is always, it always seems impossible until it's done. End of quotation. That is Nelson Mandela. And I always say, be the change that you always want to see. I remain just sincerely, Akinfatunke, your anchor, I can on air. See you November 23, 2021. And please don't forget to tell your friends. And don't forget to bring on your advert so that the whole world can see what exactly you are doing. Bye for now. necessary to drive economic growth and in support of the public interest. Mm -hmm.